Okay, so in this next video in the uh, playlist on the theory of probability, uh, we are going to look at a theorem concerning conditional um, conditional variances, which is called Eve's law. So Eve's law, and it's called that because of uh, when you write down Eve's law, you get a combination of E V and E's basically. But you'll see that when we actually write it down. Okay, so firstly let me do the setup for explaining what Eve's law is. Let's say we have an abstract probability space here, which again has uh, two random variables defined on it. So every outcome in this abstract probability space is ascribed an x value, which is again a real number, and it's ascribed a y value, which is again a real number. Okay, and um, <coughs> We can then build the uh, joint random variable of x and y here. So the joint random variable of x and y will ascribe every outcome an ordered pair of real numbers. So some uh, ordered pair in the uh, set of all ordered pairs of real numbers, which is R2. Okay, so let's say what we want to do is we want to calculate the variance of um, the the variance of the random variable y. Okay, well, can we do it in terms of knowing the variance of the random variable x, uh, sorry, y, given x, basically? <clears throat> and that's what uh, Eve's law is all about, basically. Eve's law states that the variance of y is actually the expected value of the variance of y given x which we know is a random variable. We can think of that as a random variable, remember. We discussed at the end of the previous video that we can think of the variance of y given x as being a random variable which ascribes to every, um, ascribes to every outcome the um, value of the variance of y given that x is equal to the value of uh, x that uh, is ascribed to this point s. Okay, so again it's going to ascribe you real numbers. And the way that random variable works, as I've just said, is that the variance of y given x is going to map any outcome s onto uh, the value of um, the variance of y given that x, and I'll just move it over here, is equal to x of s, where x of s is the value that the random variable x ascribes s. Okay, right. Uh, so Eve Saw says that the variance of y is equal to the expected value of this random variable here plus the variance of the expected value of y given x. Okay, so again, you can view the expected value of y given x as being a random variable defined on this probability space. The expected value of y given x. And basically, it's going to map every outcome onto a real number. And the way it will work is it will say, look at that outcome. That outcome is ascribed some value by x. And basically, e uh, given of y given x is going to take any outcome onto the value of the expected value of the random variable y given that x is equal to x of s. So basically it will condition on the event that x is equal to x of s and it will calculate you the expected value of y restricted to that event, uh, that event basically. Okay, so this here, this is Eve's law. So let me highlight it. Eve's law is this. Okay, and basically it's called Eve's law because we have that E, V, V, E. So that's why it's called Eve's Law. Okay, so this is Eve's Law. Alright, so let's try and attempt a nice little proof of it. Okay, right, and it is a very, very beautiful law. I mean, it's it's like the product rule in differentiation for me. It's like uh, almost something that you would have wanted to be true, but you wouldn't actually have thought would could ever possibly have been true. Uh, it's just such a beautiful formula. Okay, so let's see why this is true. Uh, so, uh, basically, the easiest way to see it's true is just to f um, actually uh, plug in what these variances are here. So, replace this. Uh, remember that the variance of a random variable, the variance of a random variable, um, let's say, random, what should we use? We'll use t, 
is equal to the expected value of that random variable t squared minus the expected value of that random variable t and then all of that squared. And that holds true of random variables which are conditional random variables. Okay, so let's plug those in. So let's take this um, right-hand side here and basically plug in what the values of the variance are. So the variance of y given x is basically the expected value, and then we'll put in y given x squared, and then we'll subtract off the expected value of y given x, and now we'll have that all squared, basically. Right, okay, uh, so have I closed all the brackets I need to close? No, not quite. I have two here that I need to put there. Uh, one of them was a bit unnecessary. That one there wasn't really necessary, but never mind. Uh, okay, uh, now we need to put in this bit here. So this is this term here. We've just replaced this variance with what it is in terms of this formula. Now we're going to replace this variance with what it is in terms of this formula. So this is plus the expected value, and now t, the place of t is taken by this here. So we get the expected value of the expected value of y given x, all of that squared, okay, uh, and then we want to subtract off the expected value of, and now we substitute in t, which is the expected value of y given x, so that goes in there, okay, and then you square that entire thing. Okay, so all I've done is basically replace this variance with what it is, and replace this variance with what it is. Now, Something very nice happens uh, quite soon, because we can um, split this up by linearity. So if we split this up by linearity, then what we're going to get, so this is equal to this. Now let's, um, oh sorry, not this is equal to this. This is equal to this. This right-hand side is equal to this thing that we've come up with here. Now if we split this up by um, uh, linearity, then if we split this first term up, uh, we're going to get the expected value of, and then this first term, the expected value of y given x squared, like that, okay? And then what we'll get is also minus the expected value of, and now I'll put this term in, so of uh, the expected value of y given x squared, like so. And then it will have, this bit will leave unchanged for now. Okay, so we'll get plus the expected value of, and I'll just move it up, an expected value of the expected value of y given x and all of that squared, and you'll notice something very nice, that that term is exactly the same as that term, and one's got a negative and one's got a positive, and then we get minus, um, and now we'll use Adam's law, we might as well. Adam's law states that the expected value of the expected value of y given x is actually just the expected value of y. So that's very nice. That simplifies down nicely. So now what we do is we cancel these two terms. So this term here cancels with this term here. Okay? And all we now need to do is this term looks perfect because remember what we were trying to prove. We're trying to prove that this is equal to the variance of y. Now what we're heading for, therefore, is the variance of y would, just by this definition here, be the expected value of y squared minus the expected value of y squared. So the fact that we've got a minus the expected value of y all squared there looks pretty good. So all we now need to do is try and do something with this hideous monstrosity here. Right, well, this is the bit that I'm going to have to convince you of. And what I need to convince you of is that this random variable y given x squared, so this random variable y given x squared, that needs, to, I need to convince you that that's the same thing as y squared given x, basically. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Right, so uh, let's just go over what y given x is, remember. Okay, so let me pull this up. So basically, if this is the R2, if this is our joint random variable, x and y being mapped onto R2, then um, 
then uh, this random variable, if we, if we condition on the value of x, what we are effectively doing is saying, OK, x is now some constant, so x is equal to a constant. And we want to pull that probability space out. So we want to pull out that event and consider it an entire probability space now. So we pull it out and consider it a probability space in its own right now. And we want to now create, uh, we want to put this function y restricted to x on there. So we restrict the random variable y onto this set, which is the event that, um, that the um, outcome is mapped onto the, uh, the value a by this random variable x. OK, so we restrict this random variable y down to that set x. And uh, basically, that's going to map you onto real numbers. OK. And basically, if we square this function like so, then all you're going to do, basically, is map all of these values instead onto that, the same value that they were initially mapped onto, but squared. OK? So you're just going to map them onto the same number. Oh, sorry. But you're going to map each point onto the value that it was originally, but now squared. OK. And I, my claim is that that's the same thing as taking the original um, original uh, random variable y, which described every point in this bigger probability space, a value of y, and then squaring that, and then limiting that down to the um, event x is equal to a. So basically, in this case, what we do is we limit the uh, random variable y to the event that x is equal to a, and then square it. In this case, what we're doing is taking the random variable uh, on the whole probability space, squaring it, and then limiting it down to x is equal to a. And basically, it doesn't make any difference which you do first. Those two actions commute effectively. It doesn't change what you overall end up with. And we'll continue this discussion of Eve's law in the next video.